Running for U.S. Congress District 8. We'll give you four minutes to give us a campaign speech, and then we'll go into question and answer mode up to the 20 minute time frame. Okay. Starting now? Yep. Yes, sir. All right, good deal. All right, hi everybody. I'm Tyler Russell. Uh, I am running for U.S. Congress, as was just introduced. Uh, I believe that most of you already know a lot about me and what I'm doing, but I'm going to give a quick, brief run through of my qualifications and my experience, and then uh, a little bit maybe about my policy. And then I want, you know, I would rather that you guys have more time to ask questions than for me to sit and tell you what I want to say. So, really, it's all about you guys. Um, well, it's much more fun to be on the other side of this panel. Okay, um, I, I believe that my biggest beef with what we've seen for the last 14 years from Congress is a lack of leadership. Um, I believe wholeheartedly that if we had better leaders in Congress that we could get more accomplished and we'd have more principled votes and that people would be doing what's right instead of uh, doing what's economically sound in their mind. Um, for the last 15 years, I, I like to think of myself as a strong leader. Both of my senators and my congressmen when I was 18 years old thought that I was a good enough leader to be sent to the Air Force Academy. I worked as hard as humanly possible to not do the wrong thing there, and God willing, I graduated with a degree in aeronautical engineering. Uh, I was selected one of six lieutenants uh, in the entire United States Air Force to attend Naval Force Graduate School, where I earned a second degree in meteorology. Uh, having done so well at the last two institutions, uh, the Air Force said, well, where, what would be a good place for him? They sent me to Honolulu uh, to, as my first duty assignment, uh, and I worked for the PACAF commander, and uh, I also worked for PACOM, which is basically the entire Pacific Theater. I was responsible straight to that general for all weather-related intelligence for the entire Pacific. So the Air Force saw my leadership, and then they they went on it. Well, I finished my training in 33% of the time allotted, uh, was moved straight to lead meteorologi meteorologist position where I was there uh, representing 50 forecasters, uh, making sure the day-to-day -day operations there were sound, that the forecasts were good for Korea, for Afghanistan, and Iraq. So, I need to say I had a very busy job, uh, and when things were wrong, uh, it was my problem to solve. Um, with my duties, I also worked hard to get my MBA. I, I felt like finance was an important aspect of the Air Force. It's an important aspect of our government. It's something I wanted to know more about, and I didn't get a whole lot of it in engineering. All I knew was that steel is cheaper than aluminum, and aluminum is cheaper than titanium, so I figured maybe it's time to learn a little bit about accounting. So I studied for my Master's in Business Administration and graduated from that program while in the Air Force. Uh, it was rough. Uh, taking my time off on my weekends and whatnot to go to school, but I felt like it was valuable and good experience. Those degrees got me to ExxonMobil. Um, I took the time uh, at Exxon to learn how they budget. I learned how a successful company operates. And it's those principles at Exxon that I want to apply in the U.S. Congress. They're very simple things. You keep your budget balanced. You don't spend more than you have. You don't execute programs for the entire company, but only a small percentage of the company needs something. And I believe that these conservative principles that stem from that are a background of our company would be great to take to the U.S. Congress as well. Uh, for 14 years, our congressman has neglected to follow these very simple principles, and I plan to bring it back. Uh, I need your votes on March the 2nd, so I'm hoping that, uh, that tonight's uh, questions and answers will answer whatever you, you have for me. I mean, what experience have you had like in, in the political realm? Are you saying that your your experience really has just been like with, with your business and your and so on? Have you have you had What's any kind of involvement with like the Republican Party or um, what kind of political background do I have? <laughs> I'm not going to lie to you. I have no political background whatsoever. I am an engineer, hoping to be a citizen statesman. So I believe that the problem with the government we have now is that we're sending people who are experienced, who have been manipulated by the parties, that have been bought off, and when they get to Congress, they're just as willing to compromise there as they were in all their previous jobs. Um, I know that we see it here in Texas often. Uh, we've seen it in the local governments going to the state government. We've seen it from the state government going to the federal government. Time and time again, these experienced politicians don't do what the people's will is. And I believe that it's my goal to represent the people, especially as a member of the House of Representatives. 
I could more understand a senator not listening than a, somebody in the House of Representatives because their title is representative. So I would like to make it my platform to, to listen more to the people and to not be one of those people that are brought into the system and then ground through to be molded into something that they like. So what would prevent you from becoming like all the others? My, my principles and my background. Uh, as an officer in the military, there's three things, especially in the Air Force, that they, they try to ingrain in everybody. It's integrity, it's service, and it's excellence. If you can get those three things right, you can get anything right. And integrity is first, and it's paramount. And where does integrity come from? Well, first it comes from your character. And my character is defined by my Christian principles, and my service, my service attitude comes from the fact that I was always raised to serve. So if you can help somebody else, you can help, they can turn around and help you. And then lastly, excellence. It's always striving to do something better. And I believe that as a representative, the best thing you can do is follow your principles, whether you, you, know, you believe in the Christian gods or you believe something else. I believe that God is the end-all, be-all for what it is that we have defined in our country. Secondly, I think that the Constitution stands strong and says what our federal government should and should be doing. And then thirdly is our constituents. And I believe if we can get our priorities straight, God, Constitution, people, we can really move forward as a country. Sure. Okay, you, you're very passionate about what you believe and what you want to do for your country, correct? Yes, ma'am. <laughs> okay, keeping that in mind, if you don't win, what are you going to do? I'm going to run again. What are you going to do between now and the next election? Uh, prep my staff to run again. Um, I think that it's important that we get out and explain to people and educate them about who their representatives are and really get out there and, and make them understand what the votes have been. The biggest problem I've seen going door to door, and, and I've spent weekends doing it, Sam's been with me before, uh, I know Bob's been out with me at several events, but the thing is is that when you go out and you talk to these people, you realize that they don't, they don't know what their representatives have been doing. And then the people that do know don't understand why what they're doing is wrong. So I think education is a really big part of what I want to do in my off time if I'm not elected. Uh, I don't like to think negative thoughts, though. As an officer, I was also taught to think positive and get through it. So I'm thinking when I get elected, I can do these great things. If I'm not elected, I'm, I'm, I'm going to work as hard as I can for good candidates. And I'm going to work as hard as I can to educate people more about their system of government. It was amazing to me. I was in Liberty County tonight. Most people don't understand how the Republican primary works. Most people don't know that if a primary goes to a runoff, that if you didn't vote in the primary, you can't vote in the runoff. I mean, there's simple things that you could be teaching people. If they don't understand their system, how can they ask for change? Hey, you um, Question. So, since Christian principles are very important to you, and obviously you serve your country in the Air Force and whatnot, um, would you agree that you should call a spade a spade? And if so, looking at Governor Brady, oh, no, 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 no. looking at Brady, um, how would you define his character? I mean, is character really important? And if so, then um, I'd like to know how would you confront if you got to DC all the other characters <coughs> that are worse than Brady and they have their own issues? Most of them are worse than Brady. And then part C, if you will. Um, have you read the Constitution the last time you read it? <laughs> I actually uh, re I read the Constitution last night to uh, particularly uh, the part relating to what, well, the first three articles of the Constitution last night uh, because I was really upset after listening to Obama about what he says that we should be doing, what we should be doing. So that answered that question quickly. Um, to get back to your original question, um, I, I don't think that Mr. Brady's character is very strong. Uh, he came to the people of this district and said, I'm not going to vote for TARP, and voted for TARP. He goes to people and says, I'm a conservative, and then goes to Washington and spends, 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 but comes home and, oh, well, we're not spending any money, we're not spending any, anything that we can't handle, et cetera, et cetera, but he doesn't know. Or he doesn't want to tell you the truth, because if he can keep you in the dark, then chances are high that people will still vote for you, because they'll think, oh, he's doing a good job, he's speaking up for us, but he's not. And I think that that line is a failure of your character, and I disagree that he has strong character. Um, do I think that he's likable? Sure. You know, he can go and shake hands and smile at you and make you feel good, but does that mean he has strong character? Absolutely not. I think the strongest thing you have going for you when you get to Congress is somebody new, especially somebody new, um, is that you stick to your principles. And you don't let people say that, well, you need to compromise on this issue. You need to 
come to our side a little bit because if you can come just as far, uh, you know, we can get this bill passed or we can get the president.